brand new gadget, MQ-2 stick. Based on the MQ-2 gas sensor, B and C output for an oscilloscope or a voltmeter, 9 volt powered. You guys will remember the HS101 BLT gas that was featured in gadgets number 133. Also MQ-2 based. By the way guys, after the release of the video on gadgets number 133, there was a small mod made to this uh, filter water separator. Uh, the information uh, can be found in the shared files. Uh, it allows um, the sample to make its way into the chamber a lot quicker while hopefully still uh, keeping some of the moisture out. Now this has uh, a lot more bells and whistles and of course it's a much more intricate build, right? There's it has its own oscilloscope circuit. It's Bluetooth. It has a small pump and draws a sample into a chamber. I demonstrated in gadgets number 134 and 135 how this gadget uh, would come in handy for automotive diagnostics. One, that it would be capable of detecting a leaking fuel injector. One that would not hold the rail pressure when the engine was stopped. And that might cause a long crank on the next time that you try to start the engine. This leaking injector would have a little bit of fuel into the intake manifold. And I demonstrate that you're able to go out and detect at the tailpipe if there had been some leaking uh, fuel in the intake manifold. That's a long, long road. Second, that it was capable of detecting combustion gases in the engine coolant if present. Say if you had a bad uh, head gasket, right? And third, that it was capable of detecting fuel in the crankcase if it was present. Now, because the simplified MQ-2 stick does not draw a sample uh, with a pump like the HS101 BLT gas does. Um, I think that it had a hard time to do uh, that number three, to detect uh, if there was any fuel in the crankcase, okay? It wouldn't be able to pull a sample through the dipstick tube. But uh, let's see how it fares with the other two. So I took the fuel pump relay out and ran the engine until the fuel rail depressurized. And then I pulled the injector fuse to disable the injectors. The engine is an air pump, right? So wide open throttle. And we're circulating fresh air from the intake through the engine, through the exhaust manifold, through the entire exhaust system. And let's go take a look at the tailpipe end. So MQ-2 stick is hooked up to the HS502 oscilloscope to the tablet. So the MQ-2 has had time to warm up. Um, it'd be a good idea to watch a previous video where I give a primer on the MQ-2. It's ready to take measurements. In fresh air, it's pretty close to 0%. We're going to stick that into the tailpipe. What we're trying to do is establish a baseline. So there's some residue left in here and there always is going to be some residue. We just want to have like a stable, like a baseline that we know um, what contamination is just kind of sitting in the exhaust system to see if later on uh, when we repressurize the rail, if uh, it can detect a, an, an elevated uh, reading from that baseline. I'm going to give it one more crank to uh, stir up and flush the system and see what the reading does. We're kind of staying at 29%. 
bring it out in fresh air. That's what I like about the MQ-2 is how it recovers very quickly. Okay, back to kind of zero percent. Back in here. So we're going to call our baseline 29 percent. Okay, so I put the fuel pump relay back in and I've left the fuse out for the injectors. The injectors will remain disabled. Key on, engine off, fuel rail is pressurized, right? So if the injectors were not holding, there would be a little bit of fuel that would be dripping into the intake manifold. And we're trying to see if we can sniff that. Like it has to go through the engine, out the exhaust manifold, through the catalytic converter, resonator, muffler, right to the tailpipe. It's got a long way to go and a minute amount of vapors to still be able to be detected there. All of this is done with a cold engine and a cold exhaust system. Because if you had a hot catalytic converter, like your fuel would just flash as soon as it hit that. Right? Everything is cold. Okay, let's go see what's going on in the back end here. All right, so fresh air, still around 0%. Sticking the tailpipe. I haven't cranked the engine yet since I pressurized the rail. We're still hanging very close to that 29% base uh, that we had. Okay, now I'm going to go crank the engine. So it hasn't budged. That tells me that this engine, like the injectors are not leaking, okay? It's, it's a good engine. It didn't move from that baseline, right? Once we pressurize the rig. I'm gonna have to simulate, to demonstrate the capability of this, I'm gonna have to simulate a leaking injector. So let's do that. Key on, engine off. I'm going to fire one of the injectors. I'm going to give it three squirts, uh, kind of duplicate uh, a fuel rail that would empty itself by a leaking injector. Let's see if we can detect that. I'll go crank the engine and see what happens. It flew out is what we got here. Let's put that back in there. See, we're at 50%, right? It made its way to the tailpipe and uh, we were able to detect it. That's a long way from the intake manifold throughout the entire length of that system right out to the tailpipe and we see it. So here, we're trying to see if the MQ-2 stick is capable of detecting combustion gases in the coolant should you have a defective uh, head gasket. So let's open the reservoir, bring the sensor close to it, and have a look at our readings, all right? It's climbing. Climbing a little bit couple percent. I wouldn't fuss about that. That's that's nothing. Very, very sensitive tool. Two percent is nothing. So like I did in gadgets number 135, I percolated some exhaust gases through this coolant. Okay. Uh, by the way guys, I believe that, that Clamato, Mott's Clamato, I believe that's a Canadian invention. Uh, at any rate, 
Uh, you make Caesars, you know, a little bit of vodka, a little bit of juice. Really nice drink. Carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are water soluble, so they would be in here, right? So let's have a look at what the MQ-2 stick does here. There you go, see? We're at 20%, right? It can detect, like, the MQ-2 is really good for hydrocarbons, really good for carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. And once removed from the source, it recovers very quickly. That's why the MQ-2 is my favorite of that family of gas sensors. So it's a lot easier to do all these tests off camera, I can tell you that, right? So I, this 9-volt uh, battery, uh, you can get about two hours of use uh, before it craps out. Pretty good. And for an easy build, look at the capability here that I've demonstrated. Pretty cool. So uh, let's head off into the studio where I'll just give you a quick overview of this build. So I use this style of female BNC. And this nut here is a little bit tricky to tighten. So I use a quarter inch drive deep socket and a pair of pliers like this. And that's able to get it tightened up. Now there's a method to my madness. Like this BNC was inset that deep so that there would not be too sharp of a bend on that single wire on the center pin of the BNC. Because these two wires have to lay flat to allow this 9 volt cradle to seat properly. And these little bosses here on the bottom of the cradle, well I just cut them flush with a utility knife. I decided to go with this Gorilla brand mounting tape. Put a strip on the end here and a double layer on the bottom. Trust me, that stuff really holds. To power that project we need DC to DC step down converter. Happen to have some of these mini 560 on hand. They bring that 9 volt down to 5 volt. They're very inexpensive. And of course an MQ-2 sensor with an all important 1 kilo ohm resistor in this center position here. If it didn't ship with 1 kilo ohm, then it needs to be replaced with one. And these pins need to be bent upright. Now this box needs to be printed with supports. And if all the support material is properly removed, then the MQ-2 will be a nice friction fit in here. Just like that. Now the wiring to this is quite simple. There's not even a switch, right? Just by plugging the 9 volt battery in is on. Take the battery out is off. Battery goes directly to the plus and minus on the input side of the buck converter. The ground output is shared with the BNC ground and the MQ-2 ground. And the 5 volt output of course to the MQ-2 sensor. And also the BNC center pin to the analog output of the MQ-2 sensor. Now a final word, those DuPont cables, like the wire just simply will refuse to tin. So that's why the crimp ends were kept. Maybe the wires are a bit long, but at least the crimps are able to solder onto the boards. And all that is left is to snap on the lid. There you go. As usual, I share all the build information and the STL file in the video description. Subscribe if you're into this kind of stuff. And hit that like button to help the channel out. Talk to you guys soon.